and welcome back finally to our last element in the alkaline earth metal group radium now if i pull up all very quick as a quick reminder let's pull up all the cards down on this group you've got beryllium magnesium um calcium strontium barium and francium uh sorry radium now notice that they're all um getting bigger they take up more space on the card because their atomic mass increases they're wearing the same costume because that will allow you to remember them in the group because they all have the same properties they're reactive they're silvery white and they all have two electrons in their outer shell which is uh, they don't like two electrons in their outer shell they want to get rid of them now radium radioactivity let's quickly go over that again now radioactivity let's pull up radium look at it it's huge there's loads going on there it's a massive um element it's got 80 what is it 86 is it sorry 88 it's got 88 electrons 88 protons and in the center it's got uh, i don't know how many neutrons it's got in the center they often end up with more neutrons in the center if you're um if you're radioactive it's the neutrons which are trying to hold it together but they get unstable now radioactivity is when something gets kicked out in the center forget about the electrons it's all going on in the center and you've got four different types of radioactivity you have alpha uh, radioactivity which is two protons and two neutrons and that makes helium Ultimately, all it needs is two electrons and you've got your helium atom, which then floats off into outer space. Now that can be stopped by a piece of paper. But it's dangerous. If it's uh, in the form of a dust or um, you can ingest it, uh, like breathe it in, then it can cause really bad tissue damage. So it's nasty stuff. The second one is called beta um, radiation, which can be stopped with a piece of metal. Get me one of these. <laughs> then that movie. And that is where uh, you've got an electron coming out. The next one is a gamma radiation. Now gamma radiation is more like light uh, and x-rays. And it's really, really high powered stuff. And you need lead to stop that. But thicker than that. Um, that's all I had lying around. And then finally, you've got on the very last one, we've got neutro uh, neutron radiation, which is where it spits out a neutron. So all you need is um, something with hydrogen in. Water will do. There you go, sorted that one out. Or plastic, because so that's got hydrogen in. So those are your four different types of uh, radiation. Now, radiation was discovered um, by Henri Becquerel in 1896. Here he is. He left some uranium salts next to a photographic piece of paper and it made a mark. He thought that something was going on, but he didn't fully investigate it. He kind of reached a dead end until this lady came along. Now. Marie Curie, she's worth a, a big mention here. She was born in Poland in 1867. Now, she finally moved to Paris uh, when she was in her 20s and she met her husband over there. And at the time, Paris was, it was a mecca for science, culture, art, um, new discoveries, inventions. They were building the Eiffel Tower at the time. It, it was where everybody was going to brainstorm. And when she met her husband, she, she, all, you want, all she wanted to do was chemistry and science. And she threw herself into it and she picked up um, the information that there was something going on with this radioactivity. Nobody had really investigated it. It seemed like a new field. So she went in there and between her and her husband, they produced some really sensitive electronic equipment. Here's a picture of one um, to measure the very, very minute amounts of radiation coming off different substances. And she ended up using this equipment and a lot of hard work discovering um, polonium over here, which is uh, she named after her 
country of birth and radium which is what this video is about and radium she named it radium because of the rays coming out of it she went on to win two Nobel Prizes she was the first woman to become a professor at the University of Paris she invented the mobile x-ray machine which uh, here it is um, which was massive help saved many lives in World War One because broken bones or shrapnel and so on uh, but unfortunately she ended up uh, passing away in uh, 1934 from radiation exposure. But, big round of applause for Marie Curie. Now, bring up the card again, we've got uh, a nasty story, a nasty side to radium. Being radioactive it is very dangerous and there was a thing called the radium girls. Now can you see the clocks? the dials in the eyes. Now, there was a factory in the 1920s in America. They were using um, radium compounds which glowed in the dark to paint with these fine paintbrushes which they were licking to keep them fine onto the dials of paint, uh, onto the dials of the watches and clocks. And um, it caused huge suffering and illness. Terrible, uh, so there's deaths. Um, there was a big cover up. Um, there was a lot of court cases, they won, and the laws to protect workers were changed forever in America. So that was a, a good thing which finally came out of it. But before they realised how dangerous radium was, they were throwing it into everything. Look, they, they put it into chocolate, toys, water, toothpaste, cosmetics. And this is a nasty kind of radiation. Not all radiation is bad. Bananas are radioactive. You are radioactive. Um, and we are being hit by background radiation all the time. Uh, but radium is a, is a real nasty one and finally when they discovered that it was nasty they stopped making all these stupid things and uh, they started listening to the science rather than um, making stuff up. Uh, and finally with uh, radiation there are some really cool uh, connections with radiation and superheroes in the movies uh, here's some examples we've got the hulk um the hulk got hit hit by dr david bennett got hit by uh, uh radiation turned him into the hulk we have the daredevil now the daredevil he when he was a boy got hit by chemicals with radioactive substance in him, turned him blind, but he got super, super senses after that. You have the Fantastic Four. They went up into space and got hit by some radiation, turned them into superheroes with different powers. Then we have Dr. Manhattan from The Watchmen. He, I notice he's got a, a, a symbol of hydrogen up on his forehead. Um, it's the one thing he respected. Uh, again, he was caused by an accident of being ripped apart by radiation. Not good. Then we've got Spider-Man. He was bitten by a radioactive uh, spider. We've got Phoenix from the X-Men. She already had a lot of powers, but she became extra powerful uh, when she went again up into space, got hit by radiation became really powerful. Then we have Captain Marvel. Now Captain Marvel, she got her superpowers by being hit by radiation, which was caused by an exploding Cree device. I don't know what that is. Uh, please comment and tell me what that is, someone. And we have Superman. Now Superman uh, was born on the planet Krypton. Not this Krypton over here, but planet Krypton. And uh, he he will be he crumbles if he ever gets uh, near radioactive kryptonite. And then finally, we have the entire cast of the X Men. Now the X Men are known as mutants because radiation is one of the things which causes mutation with your DNA in your body. They're known as the mutants. So all of them uh, have got their superpowers through radiation. But so do you. 
It's another example of you being a superhero because uh, you are a mutant, but a good one. So finally, we're at the end of the alkaline earth metal. Uh, next time we're gonna go on to Scandium in group three. We're gonna find out why he's punching through ice. See you next time, bye. Oh, and don't forget, if you want the artwork, just email me, bye.